I felt awful. I felt empty. I had no energy. My resting heart rate was high. I couldn't sleep. So even when I tried to sleep, I couldn't sleep. I didn't know how to do that without burning myself out again. And that's why I reached out to you. Yeah. And the improvements have been great. The numbers going up rather than down. <laughs> that's, that was an improvement. <laughs> it's not rocket science once you get your head around it. And this was worth every penny, you know, it, it has helped me massively. Thank you very much for have a chat with you today about your experience working with myself and with the Cycle Lean community and Danville Coaching. For everyone that doesn't know who you are, just can you introduce yourself and give us a background of your occupation, what you do for a living? Right, yeah. I'm Andrew. I'm an engineer, a welder. I've been a welder for about 30 years. I started working shift work a couple of years ago. I've got a background in cycling, running, swimming. I started off as a cyclist when my kids were born, got into running. I've always been a swimmer, lived abroad, so swimming was always a big thing. And I've done quite a few sort of events, never really trained for anything, but just did Ironman, ultramarathons, swimming events, just as and when, really. I, I felt like it. I've never actually put a, a proper training plan in and found it quite hard sort of with work. So especially when I started the shift work a couple of years ago, found it quite hard to manage it. You know, I've done the odd training peaks, training plan, followed them and actually followed one for a hundred mile ultra. And that's how I came across you because I completely burnt myself out. So yeah, it's always been sort of, you know, I've, I've had really good fitness in the past, like just through volume, I suppose, but never took much notice of nutrition. It was all the old school of keep up or that's it, you're off. So <laughs> it was always hundred miles an hour. Everything was, and I had a history of, of burning out. I always was quite on the edge. I would either be on top or right off the boil. So yeah, mm. that's about the history of it. And what was your particular main struggles with your cycling nutrition before? Well, I could, I just, well, I wasn't actually following any particular nutrition plan. My idea of, I wouldn't fuel for anything under two hours. I mean, I would just carry things like saurine bars and you know, that was my fueling strategy. Mm. I would always have electrolytes, but not carbs in in the drink bottles didn't even really occur to me i mean i've read all the articles and i've watched the videos and i see what the pros do never really thought you know because i've done it for so long that i needed that you know i thought finishing a a three hour ride or a two hour ride was you know you're supposed to feel tired after that you know you're supposed to feel empty and hungry so yeah nutrition plans were pretty non-existent obviously i've done 100 mile ultra marathons but you just eat you know it was just a question of eating you just eat all the way around I, I knew I had to eat on the long distance stuff but not what and when and how often it was just more luck than judgment I think yeah so you found that from what you've been exposed to obviously there's a lot of information that you can access now with nutrition what was the main reason that you felt like you didn't apply it based on the information that you absorb because was exposed to a lot on a daily basis what is it i suppose that didn't make you take action before working together when it comes to like understanding the nu nu those nutrition habits that you might have come across on social media youtube or i think it's because of the varied nature of it you know everybody's pushing something mm. and there was no real clear it was going back in the day you used to starve yourself and then it was oh no and the other end of the spectrum was they're taking 120 grams of carbs so I was always you never quite knew what to do and and because I'd always just done what I'd done I didn't really take much notice of it mm -hmm. I needed someone to say this is what you should be doing monitoring I mean for the fact that building up to a ride you know I should be carb loaded I always knew yeah the night before I'd have a big meal but yeah. it wasn't that actual day from the, the, the day you get up in the morning you can start loading for me, it was just eat pasta the night before and then don't eat so many carbs when you're not training so hard. You know, the, the insight there is it's not rocket science. I think I'm a fairly intelligent person, but I just hadn't really thought how simple it was. It just needed to be pointed in the right direction, really. And I suppose going back to like the exposure of so much information, do you think there's a lot of contradictive viewpoints that when you're yeah. trying to sift through a lot of information just becomes more confusing rather than actually 
Like it does. Forward. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you have intermittent fasting. You've then got the ketone thing. Carbs. Carbs are bad. Then carbs are good. Eat lots of carbs. You know, it, it's you, you're just bombarded with stuff. I take in information and I think, well, that's a good idea. I'll try that. And then that's a good idea. And I was very much like that with my fitness training as well, was you just try different things, but everybody's different. Mm. And what suits someone doesn't necessarily suit someone else. And I never found anything that that, that really suited me. Yeah. You know, I needed that guidance because of my shift work, because of the different varied nature of what I was doing to say, you know, do this, do that. And I'm very much, I can follow stuff. You know, mm. I, I, I prefer to be told you know, and then I can follow stuff. Well, I, you know, I can follow it, and then it makes sense because if it works, then then it makes sense, and and that's what I mean. You obviously gave me was it all made sense. Yeah. The improvement, you know, the improvement was there to see. The results are there to see, right. rather than trying to pick out bits of information from all this stuff that, that that's been you know thrown at us at the moment. Yeah, and I suppose you do think with the when you're following a plan yourself sometimes there's not really anyone to like feed off or you're trying to make assumptions or conclusions based on how it's how it's performing my ultra i mean i followed a hundred mile ultra marathon my idea at the beginning of or well, the end of last year was i wanted to do a hundred mile ultra marathon with training i've done three of them with very little training and had varied results i've done quite well in ultra marathons or i've done quite badly it's never real consistent and so I thought I really wanted to. So I picked one off off training peaks, but I was working shift work, 12 hour nights and days and trying to run 40, 50 mile weeks. Yeah. And inevitably after three months, I burnt out. You know, it could be written for a 20 year old. I'm yeah. 51 and I'm trying to follow this plan and work night shift and day shift. And I look back now and think, I wonder I burnt out. And that's obviously when I came across you was I'd, I'd spent a month doing nothing because I'd completely burnt myself out <laughs> under under fueling over training <laughs> yeah you know, I suppose that kind of goes on to my next question in terms of what was the tipping point that made you you know reach out and thought enough was enough basically I mean that was the complete tipping point my aim was to do because I've done ultra marathons for quite a while I wanted to do these two big events which were very big events and then I wanted to get back to my cycling because I cycled with my friends and that was my original sport and I couldn't do the both so the running became you know the obsession three months of running it was going all right but I was ignoring even the training peaks line you know the fitness line was going down but I thought oh, that's part of the process just completely ignored it you know my resting heart rate's going up and getting more and more tired and it wasn't to the point that I got quite sick and and couldn't recover that I suddenly realized that you know I've I've literally just done everything that I've read that you shouldn't do <laughs> <laughs> but because I was following a training plan it was fine <laughs> you know yeah. it's telling me to do it so it must be all right but yeah. in hindsight yeah it, it, it's it was a bit of a silly move but you know you live and learn <laughs> and that, I suppose that was the point of you had to become I don't know how poorly you became with fatigue and burnout but like how, you know, to give people an idea of how you felt during that period, what what was that experience like? I felt awful. I felt empty. I had no energy. My resting heart rate was high. I couldn't sleep. So even when I tried to sleep, I couldn't sleep. I was working 12-hour night shifts. I did a system of two days on 12-hour shifts, then two days off, and then two day, two night shifts. And I just wasn't recovering. I, I was. I just felt terrible. I felt grouchy you know it, it just wasn't me at all and it was not a pleasant place to be and I dug myself a big hole and I didn't know I then decided that okay ultra marathons that's it I'm done I want to get back to cycling but I didn't know how and I was I have a habit of just going hard and I thought I don't want to get back into the cycling and then go back down that hole again and, and burn myself out which I would have because the guys I cycle with you know that they're, they're, they're sort of they all race so going out with them was going to be a challenge and I knew I wouldn't be able to go out with them to start with but I wanted to be able to eventually you know yeah. get up to that point yeah um which is where I am now yeah. but you know I didn't know how to do that without burning myself out again and that's why I reached out to you yeah I needed someone to this is the way to go do you have any sort of 
like feelings of anxious or nervousness about starting a program again because obviously you've had that experience sometimes it can be some trepidation about you know starting again and not wanting to you know, have that same experience I suppose was there any sort of hesitation yeah there, there was a bit I mean I'd watched your testimonials and the one thing that drew me to you was the age the over 40 you know I'm 51 now mm. uh, you know the whole, the whole point about this previous training plan was you know it's not aimed at someone like me who works it, it's someone with time on their hands with you know no commitments clearly looking back at it now I needed someone on the wavelength you know that who could understand what I wanted and so I was actually quite excited about it to be honest I, I was looking forward to it you know I okay. was because it took the sort of the worry out of it for me you know there's someone who can who can point me in the right direction and and so yeah I was actually looking forward to it oh, that's good yeah and I suppose you felt like because it was more tailored to the individual as opposed to it being built around you taking into account obviously with being older you have other commitments aside from work family and mm. other things you have to account for as well so yeah and my shift work and that's the one thing you I, yeah. I obviously sent you my shift schedule mm. and you worked it around that in the beginning when we first started you look at my night shifts and we basically decided nothing on the night shifts yeah. and then everything else was on because I obviously had more days off and we based it all around that and I immediately I mean, the improvement was from day one, you know, mm. I did those first two tests, the FTP and the VO2 max that nearly killed me. I was concerned at the beginning. I was slightly concerned at the beginning because I did those two and I'm like, oh God, you know, I'm still overtrained. Am yeah. I going to be able to improve? Is this, you know, have I started too soon? Because I'd had about a month off and mm. I found it really hard because I'd lost so much fitness in a month and because I had overtrained I was a bit concerned it had left the mark you know that you read about people who have overtrained and you know it takes months or years to get over and I, I was a little bit nervous that I'd pushed it a bit too far yeah. but as it went on and you monitored what I was doing it was quite evident that I hadn't and I've managed to get improved massively over the last few months. Yeah so it's a very good point to bring to the attention of anybody listening or watching because I don't know if you've seen the Mark Cavendish documentary. He had that prolonged fatigue yeah. was, where it was almost could have been indefinite if he'd have not managed his recovery well enough in order to come back because he was feeling so overly trained and fatigued that you must reach a, a tipping point. It's almost like you're off a cliff and then it's almost impossible to get back on yeah. top of it on the hill again. So, yeah, it's a really interesting point that you've brought up because if you're not aware of those things and also you like you mentioned if you come back too soon you could essentially very quickly could have declined the wrong way you know yeah from, it's yeah. made me very much aware now of when I mean, we talked earlier that I didn't do the ride that I would normally do on Wednesday mm. because I'd done a big ride at the weekend started the week and I was tired and I'm very mindful now of going you know, I, previously I'd have just gone through it because if I don't ride, I'm going to lose fitness. Yeah. Whereas now I can see that, no, you're actually doing a sensible thing by resting and you'll yeah. benefit in the long run. You know, it's looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. And was those kind of elements that we just talked about with being the program tailored to you and around you, was that what particularly interested you in reaching out you know all the yeah, things that you felt there was other factors involved as well a hundred percent it was the over 40s the just the basic you know someone who can look at what you're doing and the simple plan working around your life and your working life and there was nothing too complicated about it also i i wasn't really a fan of a turbo trainer and i quite actually enjoyed the sessions that you prescribed but when you learned that i do a lot of riding outside we then decided there's not much point me being on the turbo trainer and, and and it went back outside and I was commuting to work and back and it was all integrated into my you know daily life basically yeah. and the improvements have been great you know I don't need to sit inside on a on a but equally if it's raining and I can hop on the turbo and there's a prescribed session that I can do you know it, it can translate in or out I think it's the basic part really that it was easy to follow. It was a bit of a no-brainer. And there was no sort of set, 
you said, if you don't feel like it, don't do it. And that was the easy part, really. And you found, obviously, you've had experience working with Trainer Peak. Some people might not have had that experience, but in terms of using Training Peaks and the other platforms that were used to, you know, support you on and off the bike. Did you find them pretty straightforward and easy to get a grip with? Yeah, the, the yeah. Training Peaks was easy. I, I originally used it on my phone and my iPad and that because some of my rides would pair. And I, I couldn't unpair them. You can only do it on the computer. So obviously once mm -hmm. I linked up to the computer, I realized you could do it on there. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's very easy. You can move stuff around. You can, and, and understanding it, I, I never really understood all the figures and the you know the ctl and everything and now i'm like oh, okay i get the fatigue score and i get how it relates to what you've done over the past week and and yeah it makes sense and to see the numbers going up rather than down <laughs> that's that was an improvement <laughs> yeah and what about the land-based training that we prescribed that was on a, obviously on a separate platform you know training peaks now have an option to do that which is something we're maybe looking to migrate maybe in the future but how did you find that that was in terms of managing that around training peaks because obviously it's two platforms and sometimes too many balls to juggle can be too much for some people but how did, did you find that quite simple quite easy to follow as well i oh, know that was fine that was yeah, yeah. Fine. yeah it was all yeah. very simple yeah um and you get the notifications on your phone as well so yeah it was all it was yeah no problem and, and that's the thing everything about it and then the nutrition one was great as well it was all very simple to use there was nothing complicated didn't you know i'm not a massive it guy i use my phone and anything i do with the computer is watch youtube videos so you know it was all easy to use yeah i had no problems with it at all good because sometimes that added stress on top of training and work and other life can just be a little bit too much for some people isn't it trying to make that as smooth as possible you know for me is really important to try and remove that added stress for yourself and other clients because you, you know it's the last thing you want to be worried mm. about on top of other factors was it did you come across any challenges at all while we're working together that you had to overcome or was it generally pretty straightforward not at all i had to get my head around zoom and loom i'd never <laughs> used that before i'm yeah. an engineer and not a computer-based worker so for me but even then it's not rocket science once you get your head around it you know it's a couple of buttons and you're in and i really like the one-to-one -one I mean, that was the one thing I did like was the fact that I could message you or send you a voice note. Mm -hmm. And then the, the weekly feedbacks, me doing the video, you know, helped me. And then the monthly one-to-ones was was brilliant. You know, it, it just sort of cements how you're feeling, you know, moving forward. So you both, you know, we're both on the same page. Yeah. No, I, I did. I found it all very easy to use. And it's not something I've ever used before. So I've never... You know, I followed ge generic plans and I've been in and out of them. God knows, how, God knows how much money I've spent on this plan and that plan and then stopped them. And and this was worth every penny, you know, it, it has helped me massively. And I feel so much more confident going forward. I feel like, in, you know, nutrition and, and everything, it's just, I know what to do in a very short period of time. This is what I can do. I always kind of was slightly concerned at 51 that I was going to start deteriorating and i've never been a massive athlete i've always been an age grouper and got the odd podium but nothing i was always sort of middle of the road i was always happy if i was in the top half yeah and now i feel i'd like to compete now get on a podium at, at my age and in because mm. obviously we've talked about i want to get back into triathlons and i feel like i can improve you know i've got prs on strava segments which you know i've been on strava since 2011 and yeah. I'm getting PRs on that. So, you know, just by having some structured training. So who knows what I can do in the next 10 years. <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's what really is my goal for all my clients to be able to feel that you've got those tools under your belt that you can essentially then improve continuously without coaching. There's no need or never feel there's need to have a coach full time. Some people feel for whatever reason they would like a coach. For me, it's always about passing your driving test, giving you the skills, and then you can then hone mm. your skills going forward. But So did you find with the check-ins that we did, the loom check-ins, did you find that with the loom check-ins that all the all that kind of extra content was sort of really beneficial in terms of helping you to understand yourself yeah. more about the training rather than just following a training plan 
and not really have an, an idea and just expecting you know just following what i was saying it's really helping you to kind of then learn more yourself so then you understand it better yourself to be able to then you know, take it on board in the future rather than just listening to a coach and then following blindly like a plan for example yeah i mean it was very personable it was yeah that, that's what i liked about it was that you know it wasn't like i had a coach saying do this do that you know you were explaining things and you listen to my feedback and then we'd work around that and you explain, you know, the next four weeks, the next two weeks. And then, we, you know, because I, I was sick a couple of weeks ago, you know, you said, just scrap that, you know, just scrap that session. Don't, you know, make sure you rest. And to have that confidence to do that rather than go, oh God, I'm going to lose this fitness or, you know, what should I do? That helped massively. Yeah. And I mean, it was having that direction all the way through, you know, you just always knew you were there if I had any issues. And I kind of knew the next few weeks what, what was going on. And for me also, I've got my next month is I'm going on holiday. Mm. And then we've been leading up to an event, a gravel bike event. The last one-to-one -one we had, you went through about my holiday and getting in a bit of cycling, but actually enjoying the holiday and not, you know, I've hired a bike for seven days, but as and when, and then I can go on holiday and enjoy it and then come back and have some structured training and then be ready for my event so you know yeah. the goal is that's what we've been working towards that end goal and I feel much more confident about the event I'd set myself a target because I generally need something to aim for and I feel massively confident now about doing it whereas a few months ago it was a bit of a yeah we'll see how it goes and I'll, I'll try and target that but now I can't wait for it yeah. really looking forward you to it. Did the event before we started working together or was that something you just... No, it was just oh, something I had in my head that yeah. I wanted to do and I told the guys I was going to do it. I did it last year. Last year was 100k and this year it's like an anniversary so they're doing a 100 mile gravel bike. I know I can do that but I want to be able to do it and feel a lot more confident now with the nutrition. I was always bringing like bits of food and stopping at feed but now I've got I've got all my sterica stuff and you know, I've just had a delivery today, which I'm going to bring on holiday. That was one of the big things was nutrition for me. I didn't realize how lacking I was in that. That That's yeah. helped me massively. And I completely fuel now properly on everything. So, And have you noticed much change in your body composition? Because I know your goal wasn't essentially losing weight when we worked together. But I know you did mention there was some, you know, a little bit of weight loss. But I suppose, how has that evolved over the... Yeah, I'm a lot leaner than I was. I'm not, I mean, I've even noticed in the photos, if you look at my photos, I mean, I've never been, I've always been quite lean anyway. Yeah. Um, but if you look at my photos from the beginning to now, you can see the, the body fat that I've lost. Mm. I'm a lot more aware of what I'm eating. I tend not to eat so much rubbish. I mean, I was never a big eater like that anyway, mm. but I tend to reach for the fruit rather than the, the ice creams and stuff like that now. And the strength training was great. That was good to follow once a week because I was always in the mind that you've got to do a lot of strength training but you're like no once a week is fine yeah. and I found that's helped a lot and the yoga that is it's another thing I knew as I got older I needed to do stretching and more mobility stuff and range of motion and I've always done another thing when we picked up this plan picked up that signed up to this app sign up for that and just never really been consistent with it and you set me a 15 minute session which I've done every day since this start and it has helped me no end i mean i used to get tight hamstrings and driving a car i could only last 15 or 20 minutes before i would get sciatica yeah. that's all gone i only noticed the other day when i was driving i drove up to willicum and I, I suddenly realized that i hadn't had any pain which was you know for the first time in years and it's just a simple 15 minute routine in the morning yeah. and i quite like it now because i wake up in the morning i, I get up at quarter to five and I'm a bit like, oh, I've got to go to work. And that 15 minutes is it's almost like meditation for me. Yeah. By the time I've done that, I feel great. You know, it, it really helps. And it's such a simple thing. It's yeah. such a simple thing. But to have, because it goes back to someone to say, just do this, you know. And, yeah. and, it, and it, yeah, instead of some generic app that's saying, oh, this will make you be able to touch your toes in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. and I can actually now touch my toes and nearly put my hand on the floor that, that's yeah, what i've been working to do. Yeah. and that's the thing isn't it i suppose like you mentioned before there's so much you know that you can access but a lot of time you can almost overcomplicate things because it might be a yoga plan where you have to do like half an hour of yoga or you might feel intimidated that the movements are 
maybe too advanced so then you do them for a bit and you can't do them but i suppose just how we try to well, how i try and program things is like you said is making things as simple as possible fit it in around your life and that consistency that you've been adhering to and the commitment that you've shown in terms of doing it regularly is what's really got the results isn't it because 50 minutes on its own is not really going to provide much result but 50 minutes compounded over months is pretty significant so it's made a massive difference yeah. a huge difference to, to how i you know i was going to physio once a week and you know she'd say what's wrong and i'd be like you know this 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 and this and now i just don't get any of those i mean i always kick myself that i haven't done it sooner because it was so simple yeah you know and yet you know you think gosh why didn't i do this years ago <laughs> But it, you know, I'm happy. You know, I'm 51, right. and my body doesn't feel like it hurts so much anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's much benefit in terms of how you feel during your work, also on and also on the bike. I, I suffered because I'm in engineering, heavy lifting. My back doesn't hurt. I mean, I, I suffered quite badly with my yeah. back, lower back, tight back. That's all gone. Cycling, I would get tight at the beginning of every ride. I would get really tight hamstrings and glutes, and it would take a good climb to stretch them out and now i've noticed as soon as i start on the bike i don't get that anymore that that's all gone completely yeah and it's you know i just assume that's it you know i just have tight hamstrings and i just have you know that's just the way it is but yeah it's all gone you know would you say is that it... sorry Andrew, would you would say it's probably then shifted your mindset a little bit more like you mentioned with now you're really excited about what you can achieve going forward at your age and further. So, one hundred percent, yeah. Obviously, with the you know the mobility and the strength training, alongside the cycling, and, mm -hmm. and the, the programming, is really now kind of put you in a position. You think, well, I can, what am I? What what am I capable of doing? Rather than like you mentioned there you said oh this is something i accepted i've got tight hamstrings i'm maybe getting older that's just part of it and the kind of that there's almost always like a limiting belief but now you've seen the positives of what you can achieve you can really feel that you've got you know more potential in you yeah i mean i i'm looking forward to doing this event but i'm also looking forward to doing this event and getting back to swimming and running because i'm part of my local running group and i haven't been out with them because i really wanted to concentrate on the cycling yeah. i knew if i try to do the running as well it would take away you know i want to get to a level in my cycling when swimming i've always maintained that anyway that's that's always been fine i can get back to that but running is obviously very quite demanding on the body and i didn't want yeah. that to take away from my cycling so yeah and and I'm, I'm i tell you what i'm very much aware of starting the running again very very easily and not doing because obviously you, you have a certain level of cardio fitness so you feel that you can run but I'm very much aware of, you know, doing the same with the cycling as I did with the running, introducing yeah. it very slowly, yeah. you know, nutrition and, and and the same sort of thing, just keeping that um, range of motion. And, yeah, I'm really excited, actually, about the future. Yeah. 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 I'm really pleased with you, man. You've put in all the hard work. So in terms of, like, your fitness and nutrition now, since working with me, how would you sort of, you know, sum that up from where it was to where it is now? Oh, I mean, a hundredfold, I'm very mindful now of nutrition when I'm training, resting, the actual, and I, I don't, because I go out with my friends and I still can't keep up. They can drop me quite easily. I mean, they ride a lot and they race, but it doesn't bother me because, you know, there was a time when that would have, I would have been quite depressed by that. And I'm never going to get back to them. But I know now that I will get back to a good level. You know, it may take another few months. But yeah. I see that the progression I've made and I know it's just only going to get better. Yeah. That is huge for me. You know, th th there's just a big mindset change for me. The confidence that you've set me up with the tools to be able to have confidence in myself. And rather than the bombardment of, I'll try this, I'll try that. You've made it very simple for me. I think that's, if you put the work in and you just follow the basics, nutrition, rest, and a good amount of balanced training you know so i would do my easy rides to work and back and my early week you know zone one rides and then your zone two rides and then your you know your hard your hard threshold rides mm -hmm. and then but then recover and then eat well and you know it all came in together you know the, the hexis app that all gave me a you know what to to fuel on and you know 
because I would be like just eat carbs all the time and and then it's like you don't need to when you're not training so hard so yeah it's just given me the confidence moving forward brilliant and, and what was the like the two main goals you had when coming in at the start it was just to get bike fit again just to get was well, to go out with my friends that was it I, they were so far ahead of me I mean there was a time when I was the one dropping them and that was, you know, when I got back into the running to do this, I lost a lot of cycling fitness because you can be fit, but, you know, specific sports. And I'd lost a huge amount. That scared me because I used to be able to come back from, you know, from whatever I'd done. I'd, I'd not trained for a while. I could always come back. But I've, obviously, as you get older, you, it doesn't, you don't bounce back anymore. <laughs> and I found that really, yeah, bit of an eye opener. It's like, wow, this is going to be, you know, this this isn't going to be a quick bounce back. Yeah. And my main goal was to be able to just go out and enjoy riding with my mates. You know, that was that yeah. was what we talked about in the beginning. I said, yeah. there's no particular race goals in, in mind at the time. It was just to be able to, and that's what I've been able to do. You know, within a couple of, well, less than that, within a month, I was back out with them. I mean, they were dropping me, but yeah. I was back out with them. And now I can ride, you know, if they put a burst on, yeah, I'm gone. But, you know, it's been nice. It's been nice to get back yeah. to it. And so if you had to put the achievements that you've had since working together in bullet points, what would you achieve? Achievements is confidence would be a massive one. Confidence in my training. Mm. Achievements are being able to ride with my mates again. That's the main achievement. Being able to, the confidence being able to, to, to write off something if I didn't really feel like it, rather than trying to, just do a, a set program for the sake of it. Fueling properly, that's a massive one. That's a big eye-opener for me. I have watched a lot of stuff, but it never really took it in. And that, you know, it's it does make a massive difference, um, the fueling side of it. Would that be on and off the bike? Or is, is it... Yeah, on, on a lot on the bike. Yeah. You know, that, that's off the bike, yeah. But on the bike, just... I had a habit of finishing i think i said before finishing rides and being empty but thinking that was just the way it was but now i can finish a ride and not feel empty and yeah. i've still been a hard ride because i've fueled all the way through and my friends still don't mm. you know they'll look at me like why are you you know you're eating again or you're drinking in fact one of my i always carry two bottles one of the guys drank one of my bottles because he'd run out yeah and he said what have you got in there and i, and I was like oh you know just something and he was like oh right <laughs> looking at you know wondering what was in it and it's just sterco basically but that was quite a high priority for me i think yeah. being able to fuel properly yeah. and the rest knowing when to rest and not feeling that i'm detraining you know rest is part of the process yeah so that's high up there as well yeah brilliant andrew it's great the fact that you're now probably passing on some knowledge to your friends as well they might have probably got some benefit from having that sterco and ridden stronger towards the end of the ride there so that's good and, and in terms of how you feel generally on a daily basis now, what was in comparison to right. you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I came off shift work and that was a big thing for me, mm. being able to finish work at a reasonable time was good. Routine, but that was a lot easier for me. Mm. And I just generally feel a lot healthier. You know, don't get me wrong, I still get tired. I wasn't feeling too good yesterday, so I didn't do my ride. But I feel confident about not doing it and then going okay a couple of days recovery and then we'll see how it goes the weekend so yeah i don't beat myself up so much about it because i, I know it's you know there's peaks and troughs but you're going in the right direction and i feel confident about that now so yeah moving forward i'm very happy okay you got confidence now in your habits that you've established those good yeah. framework of habits that as long as you're consistent with those more often yeah. than not you're going to see progress and like mm. you said you know progress is never linear it's not going to go skyrocket it's going to be up and down but if you extrapolate that over a period of you know if you look on a stock market the s&p 500 is continually yeah improved but there's been massive crashes but also massive peaks but it's been steadily improving so if you approach your training and your fitness in the same vein you can, it allows you to kind of overcome those periods where you might not feel as fit in yeah. also not get too carried away when you're really fit because i think people think oh, i've lost a lot of fitness but then in comparison to where you've come from it, you've, you're fitter than where you're well, isn't it so well i notice when i rest my resting heart rate drops significantly 
So yeah. if I do, like I wasn't feeling great the last two days, so I didn't do, I rode to work and back. But my resting heart rate went way down. You know, I mean, it drops below 40, which for me is is really low. So I generally hover around 42 when I'm feeling good. And and anything below that is, you know, I'll drop down to sort of 38, 39. And then I go, wow, you know, that, I obviously needed that rest. And, yeah. uh, you know, and and because you it was actually used, one of the things you said to me, I go to bed at sort of, because I'm up at quarter to five, I go to bed, I'd always go to bed at sort of nine and go to sleep at sort of half nine, ten. And you said, well, you know, try to go to bed early. And I'm like, I can't go to bed earlier. And I'm like, yeah, I can. So I've been going to bed at eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm asleep by nine. And and you're right, because, you know, I, I wear Garmin watches and whoops and stuff. And, and they're all very happy in the morning when, I'm, when I've had that extra hour of sleep. So, yeah, so yeah that, that, that's, you know, and it's just having someone to tell you, yeah, why don't you just do that? And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that works. <laughs> it may, it makes such a difference. Sometimes we feel like we're missing out on things. Sometimes, you know, we've got busy days and we want to maybe chill out and yeah. maybe watch, you know, TV if some people want to do that. But by sacrificing sleep, then the next day is always going to be harder. Yeah. So then you can have less energy to essentially do what you want to do the next day if you're having less sleep. But, it, yeah, it builds up uh, as well. Yeah. That, that lack of sleep yeah. will build up. I, I mean, I've got a big experience of that. And then you just make yourself ill and your whole life, you, you can affect your family and everything. And the, the difference my family see in me uh, being so much happier, yeah, it's been, made a massive difference. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, th I think that's what really pleases me as well. It's not just how you perform on the bike and the, the numbers that you produce. It's really like that holistic thing of how it's impacted your well-being off the bike as well and how mm. cycling can enhance that, not take away from it. Sometimes I think, especially with cycling, and we see... A lot of sacrifice in pro cycling yeah you know that that has to be similar for our goals if we really want to get the best out of us we have to really sacrifice everything and not have any social life and yeah go to sleep all the time and you know really kind of live and breathe cycling but actually by having that balance it should enhance your cycling because if you're happier off the bike yeah you're on the bike and it's a knock-on effect yeah yeah I've got a very understanding partner, so she she knows that I need to exercise. It's it's yeah. a mental health thing. I, I have to exercise. Yeah. I have to do something, and and that you know she knows that. Okay, I'll be gone for a few hours on a set. I mean, she, I've always done it, but she knows it, it is that's part of me, and and you know everybody's happy then. <laughs> I suppose, like you said, because you've come back now, because you're feeling better, you've got energy to. Yeah, it doesn't and doesn't I, with everyone, so. Yeah, that surprised me on a Sunday yeah. now. Like I do my or a Saturday on a Sunday I do my big ride and I finish and, and I'm not you know, there was a time when I'd be in pieces afterwards. I mean I've come back and walked in the door and, and my wife's looked at me and gone, Oh my god, you know, I'm in pieces. But now I by the end of the night I'm tired. Yeah. But the extra nutrition has 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 helped me massively. Yeah. I think that's what I really want to try and get across. So it's nice that you've really emphasized it because you're not just then coming home and writing the day off you still want to have quality time together and if that's a sacrifice because you are literally are so exhausted you can't even get off the sofa then you know it shouldn't be like that it should be you need to sort of look at that balance to be able to think well how could i come back feeling good re-energize and yeah. then still go out for a walk and still have the energy if you want to do you know something the next day if you got if you ride on a saturday you still want to be energized to be able to make the most of a Sunday and those kind of things. Yeah, that's good. And Andrew, you, you know, what would you say to someone thinking or, you know, thinking of reaching out to me, but is on the fence is hesitant about joining cycle lean mentorship, the, you know, the, the coaching process that you've had. I, I, I would say go for it because I was in that position. I was, you know, I've seen so many, followed so many apps, seen so many training plans, and, you know, I, I've been doing this for a long time. I've, I've been doing this, you know, probably 25 years. And so I thought I knew what I was doing, but I clearly didn't. And, you know, you've made it so simple for me. I was, yeah, I mean, the improvement's been, I kicked myself really, because I think, you know, I wish I'd done this years ago, <laughs> but I just wasn't ready. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just, you're just ready yeah. for it. And that's, yeah. you know, all it all came into place and I would highly recommend you. It's a very personable experience. You're very easygoing. 
and, and it, I don't find like I'm talking to a, a coach like a friend you know you're getting that feedback you don't feel like oh god I've got to do this I've got to do that there's no pressure it's just guidance basically Brilliant. so yeah I'd, I'd definitely highly recommend you I agree um, and you found the you know the fact that obviously we live in different cities I know we're in the same country and you're very close to where I grew up down in Devon but mm -hmm. some people obviously find online coaching can be a little bit disjointed because obviously it's separate from if they've had one-to-one -one well. coaching but we found with the loom videos we're doing of the communication that we have we found it's still very personal and you know 100 percent personal yeah 100 percent. and and i quite look forward to them because you know you know you give great encouragement but well, i'm eager to tell you this is what i've done and this is what i've achieved and it, it's a good working relationship definitely mm -hmm. it's made it very easy for me in something that i've never done before and yeah I've got nothing but good things to say. So, thank you very much, Andrew. I really appreciate it. It's really nice that you've made it personal. We've made it personal. That's really key for me. Online coaching can feel a little bit just like emails and texts, and you don't really sort of see. Yeah, I've heard bad things. Yeah. Like that. So, it's really conscious of having a really good check ins that we can feel that we get to know each other. And, you know, it being personal as opposed to just looking at data and telling you what to do with certain workouts and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm glad yeah, that's come, the, come across. It's, yeah. it's the feedback. It's getting that one-to-one -one feedback rather than getting some generic response. This session is for a reason. Do this because of, and you're giving quality advice. That's the big thing for me. Yeah. You can understand it rather than going, do this, do that response. I'm understanding it and, and moving forward with it myself. So, yeah. So you found that how a coach could be transferred in like layman's terms, I suppose, quite easy to understand because sometimes when it comes to nutrition and cycling and training, it can be an element of it being too scientific that sometimes can be a bit confusing, but hopefully the way I've kind of done it, can, we've got those science-based backing principles, but, Mm. making it easier for you to understand if you've certainly not that inclined i suppose that you said yeah definitely yeah. you just feel the confidence that you know what you're doing and mm. i'm getting the results great andrew and finally a few things how would you like the service to evolve in the future if you got any suggestions any feedback in terms of how you like to see the service improve in the future based on your experience i can't think of anything that would improve it yeah I, I have no complaints about anything all the way through you know in fact we improved it because originally it was a weekly form i filled in and quickly that went to a video and that for me was much better because i could articulate and you could then see yeah. how i was rather than just filling in a generic form and that's yeah that quickly evolved but everything that you did with the weekly feedback and the monthly one-to-ones and and the nutrition and the, the training peaks i found we did try the the other platform but it it wasn't quite as clear as the training peaks and yeah it, it was all very very easy to follow mm. i can't i think of any improvements really yeah brilliant i suppose the lean thing was definitely a key i had feedback from previous clients about sometimes just filling out a form it's quite hard to express yourself in yeah. the world isn't it where just talking to a video you can really expand on things more than you might be able you know yeah. able to in written format and i suppose it takes away a little bit of pressure of thinking how i'm going to answer something and you can just kind of talk freely and provide some mm. feedback in a more relaxed environment and for me as well it's been a really i really love getting the check-ins from you and from other clients as well because i can see like how you're feeling can see yeah. oh, i've had a really good ride a smile on your face i can really get a, a sense of you know if you don't feel a bit tired i can kind of feel that in your body language or your excitement if you're feeling really good when you said i'll oh, smash my pb up a climb and yeah nearly beat andrew feather i was like andrew I was feather. <laughs> watching it it's great so i think you know it's just it's almost just happened like a for me what i felt it was and what i really wanted to make the experience like it's like me just sit, sitting having a chat with you in a coffee shop and, and just Really yeah that that is a how big you get yeah. yeah and even when you go through the training plan you do you know you show it up on the screen and that's really helpful and it is it's that personal 
yeah. that for me is is a massive thing and you know that that's helped a yeah. lot no brilliant and you know you've been a star client you honestly it's been an absolute joy working with you so but i would i'd say you know you're the catalyst for all the results that you've achieved you know you've taken on board everything that i've advised you to do i don't like you mentioned i'm not a drill sergeant that you have to do this but i want to get the best out of you as as, as much as i can but it still comes down to you applying the principles and taking on board and following through the process and you know you've seen the rewards by doing that and i think because you were you know thanks for having faith in me and confidence in me to you know go with that as well that's what i want you know i want someone to be able to point me in the right direction rather than some you know generic coach who's just throwing data at you which doesn't make sense and yeah i think that's the person experience was really good for me and it got the best out of me because i respond to that better yeah it's just having that you've helped me no end i mean you have it's just been great you know i feel so much better the training feels better and i'm excited to see what's next for you obviously looking forward to still in a training phase leading up to your gravel event which is i'm excited to see how you get on there and obviously then going forward getting back into the triathlon as well as a previous triathlete it's a great sport to be involved in as well. Having that mix mm. of disciplines, I think, works really well with managing your body as well. So, yeah. you know, I always found maybe you might have experienced it when less with cycling, but more of running. But when you run a lot, you're more likely to get injured Yeah, compared to a cycling a lot. You need a lot more recovery. But when you do triathlon, you've got swimming and cycling. So you've got that aerobic base that's helping you in other it, ways. It's a good overall fitness yeah. because of swimming and the right yeah you do it all and it, it does help you a lot you know with maintaining weight mm. uh, muscle you know because you're a cyclist doesn't mean you can run just because you can run it took me a long time to be able to join the two together because I was a cyclist and then got into running started running and I couldn't ride my bike anymore because my legs hurt so much and <laughs> it was a long time before I could do both and perform reasonably well at both mm. But, you know, working with you has made me, when I get back to running again, I know not to just go out and try and bang out a 10K run at, you know, a seven-minute mile pace. I'm, it's back to walking and getting those muscles back. You've given me the confidence there to be able to get that back in again. Yeah, It's easily done. I know I've done a few runs recently. Yeah, I saw that. 10K to eight miles. I didn't expect it to be as long as it was. And it was pretty much like an hour run. And the next few days, I was like, oh, God, I'm not used to this, not used to experiencing this, where I could do quite hard efforts on the bike and just feel fine. You know, yeah. legs a little bit tired, but you're not struggling to walk and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just being mindful of, I think, also running slower because zone two, when you're running, is very different to zone two on the bike, you know. So, oh, yeah. I think working on, and I've done a few r- runs doing zone two and I literally had to kind of walk to try and get my heart rate down because it's so elevated. So, yeah, but I think that now you've got those tools and that, that understanding, mm-hmm. that would just only accelerate your running more in the future because it might be a slower burner, but you're less likely to get injured. You'll build a bigger, better aerobic base on your on the run and that would just translate to you know, yeah. overall better performance when you come to triathlon as well. So be awesome. Yeah. Good. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for sharing. No problem, it really no helps me to get a better understanding of how you've got on with the process and the, you've done amazing. You've worked hard. You've achieved great results. Still more to come. You know, it's great. So really, really pleased for you. And thank you very much for you know, putting in the hard work, being a pleasure to work with as well. So Yeah, I know. I mean, you've been great. I can't sing your praises enough. It's not something I would have thought I would do but you've made it something I'm glad I did. You've made it very easy for me. So yeah, thank you. Great. Andrew, thank you very much then. I'll leave you to it and enjoy the rest of your week. And I know you're off on holiday soon, so have yeah, a nice break it. when you get away. And we'll touch base anyway right, when you come back. I know we've got a little check-in this week as well, but yeah, more about just getting things ready for on the last tapering week, a couple of weeks before the event itself. So excellent. All right. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And I'll uh, you, see you soon, yeah?